Welcome back to Whatever Garage. In this episode, we are going to dive into the 79 Corvette here. She's finally got relocated to her new home. So we're going to go through her and I'm going to show you everything. And even show you the muffler that got ripped off in the process of coming over here. She was just being drugged on the ground. Now, these were just some little temporaries I put on there just so the headers weren't really, really loud. Didn't want to disturb my neighbors too bad. So let's jump right in and see what we can find. Let's get started. First off, we have parts just sort of strewn everywhere. Strewn, strewn, whatever. Headlight buckets. They've already been um, sanded and primered. So they're just about ready to go. I have no idea where I'm gonna put all this stuff. I guess right now we're just gonna lay it out on the floor over here. Just to get an idea of what all we've got again. And then all the blankets I had covering her up because of all the work I was doing in the other garage. Created a lot of dust, as you can tell. So, those can go away. Yeah, folding is not my forte, apparently. Ask my wife. Right, new windshield wipers, painted, ready to go. There may even be new blades on there, I don't know. Now I had it all taped off so that crap wouldn't get in the back of this. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the hell that is. Well, we'll find out. You and I will discover it together. Oh, you know what that is? That is just whatever's left over from the insulation I did in my garage doors. In the other garage. Now, this is the rear deck door. Still in good shape. Been sanded and repainted. This is the front upper windshield cover. She's been painted. She was repaired also, she was cracked. But I mean, I'm not going to pay $200 for a new one. I'll be damned. I've been looking for that. Look at that, she was in the car the whole time. I'm a moron. Well, doggy. How about that? That tells you how long it's been since I've been in the back of this car. Now, we've also got the little headlight covers. Um, they have not been worked. This is remnants of paint from the person who owned it before me and before them. They need to be sanded because there's like three coats of paint on them and repaired because the sides where you do the adjustments are cracked. But they're fixable. So, there. More stuff. Alrighty. Then this is a brand new base. This goes under the front of the car. Um, the original one was destroyed in the process of it being moved from her uncle's house to our house in the old place. So that was like 15 years ago. So this has been in the car for eight years. Brand new piece. And this is what I love. This. Oh, excuse me. It's a brand new 
brand new front bumper. But this is, uh, that has nothing to do with that. This I had to special order, and this is fiberglass. This is not that urethane, this is fiberglass. I ordered this and it was right when COVID hit. And the place in California that makes them was working a partial schedule, so it took me forever to get these. They were only allowed to work so many hours a week, you know, California rules. But anywho, she still needs to be sanded and work, you know, body worked. But this is a nice piece, I like this. So God help anybody that runs into it and breaks it. I will hurt them. I just like this because I figured it's gonna look better than the urethane one. It's gonna be a lot more fragile though, if somebody hits it. All right, what else do we have? Oh boy. We have receipts. Lots and lots of receipts. Now, we're gonna burn these and get rid of them before my wife sees them. Even though this is money I've already spent five, six years ago. I bought a lot of parts. And I thought this was cool. This was on Rock Auto. Occasionally they do have some cool stuff. And I found the original owner's manual for 79 Corvette. I also found the original brochure. Oh, those are pretty cool. I mean, now they're reproductions. They're not, you know, the original. But I wanted something that would go with this car, stay with this car, because this car I'm keeping forever. I will be its caretaker until I die. And probably the other one too. But this one, like I said, it's getting fully restored. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so that's it for the stuff that's hidden back here. If you look, it has an 80 to 82 rear bumper on it, okay? Now it's just like the other one, it's fiberglass, okay? I think they call it flexiglass or something like that. It's got a little bend to it, not much, but um, I like the way it looked. It, didn't, it doesn't sink in like the other one does. Um, I wanted, the 79's nice looking, but the back end lacked a little something. It needed a little, and this is the only one I could really find that I liked. Um, they, they made other ones that God knows I don't want a whale tail. Um, they made another one that was more, I guess, stands up more, more like a race car, but the only one I could find was too high. I didn't want anything that high. So I went with this, and it fits nice. This is just me fitting it. I mean, it's still got, it's got to be redone a little bit. A little bit of body fill here and there, sanded. I think she'll look good though. And then I've already put the tail lights in it, which y'all already, already saw. All right, passenger side. This is just, I just threw this in there because I needed room for something else. I need to put it out for the dogs, like a little sun shield. All right. We have the speedometer, which the wiring didn't work, so couldn't tell if anything else worked. Let's see. We've got a glove box. We have a replacement um, center console because it's got the original stuff in there where that one's cut out. So I will swap them out. And then pieces, parts, uh, seals. This is how I started the car yesterday. That was metal, so good thing I didn't break. That's my welding blanket. And then we get in here. What we have here is a mess. We have these relays, which I've got to figure out where they go. It's up here somewhere, but I covered up the center console with um kill mat, so I must have covered up the holes where it went so I can't find it. Um, miscellaneous screws, passenger vacuum vent floor, two bolts. Alrighty then. Apparently I'm missing the vent, but I've got it, that over there. Alright, 
Let's put that over there. Now, I still need to find a little metal rod to go through here so that these doors will close. I have a new frame, but I don't have a metal rod. What is holding that up? There we go. Now, everything back here is kill matted. Um, the back of this is, and the firewall and front tow boards are kill matted along the center console. I left the passenger and driver's side floors unkill matted. That's just a cheaper version of Dynamat. Um, because we need to replace this. Now let me take you on the guided tour. All right, we'll do a little walk around here. That is my vintage license plate I got for the year of the car. For South Carolina, they did this license plate from 1976 to 81, I believe. And this is the bicentennial license plate for our state. Um, these are the brand new lights I have in. This is the fiberglass or flexi fiberglass, whatever you want to call it, bumper. Um, you come across here. She's actually not bad body-wise. Got a few cracks down, I guess, road debris taking off stuff down there, but I can fix that, that's not a problem. This door is actually good. This front fender was repaired. The whole thing was this color. But when I looked on the inside, I didn't like what I saw. So I went ahead and sanded this down and I will insert the pictures here of what I found. This whole front end was cracked. It had a crack running from here all the way back. And I ground all the body filler out of it, filled it with fiberglass, actual fiberglass mat, um, and then did a little bit of body fill. This is fiberglass, like kitty hair body fill on top of it so it's actually got a solid repair done now because if you look at that picture you see how gouged out it was but I believe that's why this front section didn't doesn't fit right or doesn't seem like it has as much room as the other Corvette I don't think it was repaired properly or maybe it wasn't put back into place properly when they did it and I just repaired what they'd already done but anyhow, uh, front bumper is off. He said, I've gone around and sanded the whole frame and um, epoxied it as much as I could. This isn't a frame off restoration, okay? I got everything I could reach without taking this off the frame. I didn't have the ability to do that. Um, brand new condenser. You won't believe this. I found this at an auction, like a auction or an estate sale auction just happened to be the guy had a Corvette um, condenser it was brand new I got it for like 50 bucks you can't buy them brand new for that they're like 250 bucks um, crate motor which y'all already saw let me put that in hopefully you saw if not go back and take a look at it it was a disaster um, but she does run now pretty shittily because of that carburetor um, I am going to Atlanta for my daughter's martial arts competition in a couple of weeks. And when I'm down there, I'm going to Summit Racing. And I'm going to pick up a new Holly if they sell Hollies. I hope they sell Hollies because that's what I'm going to pick up. Just like what's in the other Corvette, I know how to tune that one. This one, I don't know jack shit about. Just saying. Um, but like, there's still a lot of stuff to do. We need a new alternator. Um, I would like to get an air conditioning in this one also. Um, it's already got a new master. It's the original booster. Uh, what else? I mean, I even, I had everything out of here completely, completely stripped. Oh, I've already gone through all the vacuum. That's all brand new lines. Um, these seem to work, but of course the other ones seem to work also. Let's see, the air conditioning unit, um, that was off refurbished, resealed, um, even did repairs to the box itself where it had some cracks in it, but it's just fiberglass. 
Let's see. Oh, this body panel. She's in good shape. Just, you know, three layers of paint on her. That's the only problem. And then she already has a new uh, cover put on her. All this, well, you can't see for all the crap that's up here, but all that I went through epoxied. Um, she's good. This door was one of the first things I did. I took it off, sanded it down completely, stripped all the glass and stuff out of it, haven't put it back in. But here's a problem we ran into. Look at this. Can you see how much of a gap there is? Now, one of the things I did do, the major thing I had to do was I had to redo this A-pillar. Well, that's the cover that goes over. You can't really see it. But um, I took the hinges off and there was so much rust back here, there were holes. The hinges were barely being held on. So I had to repair all of that. Um, she, she needs shims is what she needs right now. Um, don't have them in there. I just had the door on here just so I can open and close it. So a lot of body work I got to do with that. Um, the floors, the driver's side, this hump, you can't really see it. This hump I completely cut out and replaced because it was completely uh, rotted through. Um, I did this section here and this section here in the passenger seat and replaced them. And that, that floor is like thick because it was from my safe that I cut up. Uh, let's see, what else? Like I said, it's got the kill mat behind the whole wall there. It's got it all the way in the back. I even did the, did the part up here trying to help keep some of the heat out. Um, what else? Yeah, slam the door that doesn't have a latch, dummy. Uh, yeah. It used to have the louvers on the back window, but they were screw-in louvers. Somebody screwed holes into the top of a flipping Corvette. Why? So, body filled them in. Haven't done any body work to sand them out yet, but just filled in the holes. Um, this back panel is good. It's just like the other Corvette. She's starting to separate at her seam, her bonding strip. Um, of course, around the antenna, it cracks. I think they all do that. And then one of the other things I need to do, I did not do this, but if you look closely, somebody before, I mean, they must have taken a wire wheel to this, and they're just like gouge marks into this. So I want to clean all this up. I'm probably going to have to body fill that to get it nice and smooth because I don't want any leaks in the back window. There was evidence of it before where somebody had done a bunch of caulking inside where they had had a leak and tried to fix it. I don't want to have to go through that. And then the T-tops are not in here. No, they're not in here. And the T-tops are solid um, fiberglass tops. They're not the glass ones like in the other Corvette and they need work too because somebody screwed the inner panel onto it and went right through the damn top so we'll fix that it's just a lot of stuff that has to be done and then now that she's over here you know we can take off of uh, take her uh, choke off and cover her back up so she doesn't get dirty inside now see, now that's a nicer looking air cleaner than what's on the other car, in my opinion. You know, and I went Edelbrock because it's got Edelbrock intake. Figured I'd match it. I'd like to find some nice Edelbrock valve covers. Just to match them all. I don't know. If I get a Holly carburetor, then it sort of defeats the purpose. That is an Edelbrock carburetor, but I can't tune it for crap. If y'all have any tips on that, let me know, please. <laughs> Oh, and she's got the alloy rims, same as the other Corvette, all the way around, same size. These are my favorite rims. I don't like the caps. I don't like the damn, um, what do you call those things? Not spikes, what do you call them? The wire wheels. I do not like wire wheels. I like those. So that's my 79. This is the new project. So let's see what we can start with. Let's start by cleaning her up.
All right, we're gonna clean up some of this. I mean, it's not a finished paint job and we're not keeping it, but while I'm working on it, I at least want it to look a little bit better than it does. Give me a little more inspiration. I guess I want to continue working. Maybe y'all understand that. So we'll do a little time lapse and I'll clean her up. quick wipe down didn't really make much of a difference um, just on the top it did not on the sides like here's where the cover used to be taped onto it so what I like to do is I got a brush I'm gonna try using some of this stuff that I was using before I don't think it's really good get a little wet while I don't put it in here Interesting. Did a lot better job with that than it did with uh, just a brush. Take some scrubbing power, I guess. Now, like I said, we're not keeping this paint, so it doesn't matter. I just curious to see if this would do any good. Now, this is spray nine, simple spray nine. Let's see what she's like. We see who the winner is on this. We got spray nine for the win. I thought I heard somebody knocking on the fence. <clears throat> My imagination, apparently. Now, scrub the spray nine, that makes a difference. Now, I believe this is the Arctic White. This is the color that the other Corvette is supposed to be. I do not like it. I like the cream color. All right, let's see if we can't get that bottom part. Not bad. Most definitely got rid of that. The other stuff didn't get rid of it, just some blemishes left in the paint. Well, let's keep going forward, see if we can't get it to look better. Can y'all still see this section? Yeah, it looks like you can. Top down.
leftover spray from primer that I was doing in the door jams. But I didn't care. Oh, well that's a dirty rag. Well, that didn't turn out half bad. Look at that. I'm impressed. I am truly impressed. All right. I'm gonna do the rest though, because I wanna see how well it's gonna look. thing we're going to do here is I think we're going to go ahead and remove the steering column because that's the only way I can think of to get to that little box so I can I think it needs to be either replaced or rebuilt one of the two uh, get this off the floor before I break it I'm trying to remember which end the clip goes on all right there she goes okay now we'll remove the steering wheel and I can actually see in here now that I have some decent lighting. And I can actually see the steering box for once. You know what? I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to reach in and unscrew it. I'm going to say that's a 3 8 Okay. It was sitting. Let's see if you can see it. Right here. Okay. You have that stud back here. Well, this is the rod, and then that stud is what the thing was sitting on. That and the dimmer switch. Okay. Now, there's no dimmer switch rod because I forgot to install it when I put this column back together. So, for now, we're going to do without. But this is the column for that. And what I've done is it is right here. And what we're going to do, we're going to test to see if the box actually works. Oh. Excuse me, all the damn noise, or if the rod wasn't in place or doesn't go down far enough. Because this is what you do right here. Okay, it sits up here like this, so we're going to go that way. And the key is in the own position. It doesn't feel right. Okay, that should have been ignition. So, that answers that. It is a box problem, apparently. So, let's look at this. I want to see if it's plugged up correctly. Key is still on. Alright, let's take it off. Oh, that did. All right, you look inside, I would say no obvious signs of damage. I think what you're seeing in there is overspray from the paint because it got painted when I painted the steering column. Um, could there be paint on the connectors? Yeah, could be. We'll clean those off, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this apart. We're gonna look at the slide mechanism and see if there's anything I can do to fix it. Or if I just need to go ahead and buy a new one. Okay, a little better view of it. There are four pieces of, no, excuse me, three pieces of metal that are folded over to hold this in. No, I was right, four. There's the fourth one right there. So, let's see what we can do to get this open carefully. Because I have no idea how much these cost. It's probably something to look up ahead of time because if it takes me more time to open it than it does cost effectively than to buy a new one then why don't I just buy a new one but I like to be able to fix stuff because I like to know how it works or should I say I like to try to be able to fix stuff 
Don't always fix it, but I like to try. Need a better screwdriver because this one has like arced out on a bunch of stuff. I think we can get past that though. Well, I think we see why it wasn't working. There's two roll pins. I should have had this the other way, sorry. Okay. Dirty as all get up. Now your roll pins are probably gonna fit there and there. Okay, like this. Here's your main spring. Alright, we just lost that. Okay, there's something in there. Nothing fits in there, does it? I don't think so. I mean, there's something. There's a contact there. I don't think we push anything down in it. Alright, pick it. Oh my goodness. Wait till I show you these. All right, and there's another roll pin. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, everything has fallen apart. I think we found our problem. But I see how it operates here. So I don't think it's gonna be that bad, except for that pin. I don't know what that one does. But it's a bigger size than all of them. So that tells me it'll be easier to find its home. Oh shit, and there's a cap. I don't know where that goes. These springs, I'm assuming go in here. Cause that's where the other ones are. I put that one in the wrong spot. There are multiple size springs. All right, we are going to need to find a manual it shows this. I don't know if the manual I have will show it. Okay, those are in the right spot. I have one, two other springs left over. And these are like the brushes. So this is gonna sit there. Hope you can see this. I know my hands are in the way. Here, I'll try this hand. Now, could this have fallen apart when I took it out? It's possible. You think it's likely? No. I think we had a problem long before I made it a problem. And that one goes there. Okay, so we're now down to, oh, I think I found where the other two springs go. There's a, there's a hole down in here, in each side. Okay, that's those. Now, if you look at that, that's got a ring around it like something was placed in it and over it. I don't think that's gonna fit though. Looks like it should. Crap. Oh, and it still didn't come out. Well, everything needs to be cleaned up anyway. Okay, so we know where all those go. That pen and that pen go to the other side. This pen is the only one we have to figure out where it goes. I'm thinking it goes across there with the springs underneath it. Okay, figured that out. Now we need to figure out this. And I swear it looks like it goes right there. Unless it just went like that. But what? Uh-huh. 
and there's a hole right there that's where the pin rolls no that rolls through there where would that contact go all right we have one piece to figure out and it's that little one right there hopefully I can focus in on it here let me do it like this can you see it all right let's see if we can find it in the book before I went to the book to look it up I started cleaning this Clean that. Cleaned all the contacts. Right here, I'll show you that again. That looks nice now. Cleaned up this piece. And if you remember at the very beginning when this was upside down like that, when everything was attached, there was a little metal nipple sticking up here. And I thought maybe it was one of these rods. No. It's that little weird piece. It goes into that top chute there, and then a spring goes on top of it. But we gotta get it down there so that the little part faces down and that's easier said than done wait a minute I've got a magnet it's too big ha! I hopped it into place now we just have to push it through there we go it's in and that took one of the big springs and one of the big springs next to it and then this right on top of it perfect all right now i'm gonna put this down and we're gonna place all the other little springs in their little pockets where they belong Now, these little metal contacts, well, copper contacts, excuse me. Copper's not a metal, it's an alloy, right? Just curious. I mean, it's, hmm. Never mind, I'm just gonna shut up. Dexterity is not the greatest anymore. I have a hard time using doing things with these little small objects. My hands just don't want to seem to work. But I got it. Alright, now we know that as it sits, it goes like this. It's got to fit into here. How are we gonna, oh, I'm sorry, let me do it down here so y'all can see. Okay. It is in. That little tab is still in. Okay, don't touch anything. Matter of fact, just let go of it because you haven't cleaned this yet. You know what I didn't do? I didn't put any dielectric di grease on here. Damn it. No biggie, everything's still in place. Let's do that now. All right, I got a little bit. We're just gonna, a little dab will do you. I don't wanna overdo it. And I'm just doing a little dab on each little metal tab. Okay, now. The next thing I want to do is the roller here, just a little bit, and then we'll do some on the top ones when we put them back in. All right, so that being said, I'm 
There is that. Still haven't cleaned that, darn it. I think the only purpose of this is just to roll. That's what it looks like. Let me get the spray hang on. See many, many, many years. Oh, sounds like the kids are home. Many years of it scraping up and down on that. That one on the side. I think I can put this on first, though. I think. Do you remember what side it was on? Shoot. I don't either. Anybody got a picture? Crap. And it goes this way. But then there was this over here. But I don't remember exactly where it was. I'll try that. See what happens. I don't think that's right. Where's the grease? What did I do with the tube? There it is. Let's put a little down here. Since that's what it's going to roll on. Just to be safe. Now, they were smart enough to make it so this can only go on one way. Now what we need to do to figure out how this brace attaches. Got it. There. That side. Now. Like such. Okay. There. Now, we need to play. Hey, how's it going? Good. It's because I've been cleaning. You see the Corvette? It's clean. What are you making? I am fixing the ignition module so that the key will just start with the key now. All right. What you couldn't see was me pounding on this to get the little tabs back in place. So, one ignition module rebuilt. After lunch, we'll test it. All right, let's test it. It's after lunch time. We got the switch. Let me put you right here. Let's just see if it even slides. This will be something. Okay, it slides. Let's see what happens. No, we just gotta find the plugs. All right. Oh, I left the key on. Shit. Well, that's just wonderful. Battery's probably dead. But we won't know until we try and start it. Okay. I forgot to move y'all back up here, sorry. Here we go. Can 
can you see? I hope you can see it. Well, I guess that means it's an electrical problem. All right, more work to do. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of Whatever Garage. It was a little introduction. I was gonna say brief, but it wasn't very brief. It actually ended up being a long video. But it's a brief introduction to the Corvette. There's many issues we're gonna start addressing. And the first and foremost is gonna be electrical. We're gonna figure out all the wiring issues we're having. Um, which sucks because I covered the entire wiring harness with a new loom, zip tied it, everything. And it looks like I'm gonna to have to take all that stuff off to figure out where everything goes. So it was a complete waste of time. But two steps back, one step forward, that's about how it goes right now. And then we'll get into tuning. What's the other thing? Valve lash, the headers getting painted, everything. We'll, we next time will come up with a game plan on the old uh, whiteboard back there and figure out how we're gonna attack this. If y'all have any ideas, let me know. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to tackle electrical. All right, so I appreciate you watching if you made it this far. Um, I appreciate the comments. Uh, last video was done, did pretty well. The one before that, nobody watched. So I don't know what the difference is. You let me know if there's a reason. Um, but I appreciate you watching. Uh, come back for more. Subscribe if you haven't. Majority of you have not, so please subscribe. Um, like I said, we're going to take this thing all the way to paint. And uh, hopefully, I'm not even going to give you a timeline because I always underestimate but um, I'm gonna work on it constantly. So there. Uh, coming up, we're gonna be a couple of short videos probably because I'll be going out of town in a couple of weeks and I've got to get some content for you for while I'm gone. But anywho, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. This is Whatever Garage, out.